Good morning, YouTube. It is a good day to be in AI. So yesterday we had the uh, just complete uh, tectonic shift that OpenAI did when they dropped a nuclear bomb, uh, figuratively speaking, on the AI world. So we've got a whole ton of new ideas. And so what I figured I'd do is I'd just jump in and experiment and get my hands dirty. So this is, this is kind of old school how I used to do things where I would just kind of guess and um, go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm looking at the new playground. So we've got the playground, we've got assistants and threads and so on and so forth. Um, and one of the first things that people said on my video yesterday was, hey, why don't you um, do uh, an assistant of like your cognitive architecture and stuff? So uh, we were working on this um, in another GitHub repo where it's like, let's download all my transcripts and make them searchable. Well. Uh, OpenAI dropped a bomb where they just, it looks like they've built in RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation, into the assistance. So, but rather than feed it the raw unstructured transcripts, I'm gonna trans transition everything into SPR. So SPR is Sparse Priming Representation, which uh, I made a video a while ago. It was a little bit controversial, um, but I was like, don't use MemGPT, use SPR. And so a lot of people pointed out accurately that like you can do both. Right, because um, so the theory behind SPR is that the language model already knows a lot. So all you need is a few little bits and pieces, basically some memory pointers, to tell it how to reconstruct a memory. Um, and this is actually inspired by how human brains work. So human brains, uh, we have we have sparse memories, meaning that basically what your brain does is over time, as it compresses and compacts your memories, it just remembers a few details. And so, like say for instance, a party that happened ten years ago. You don't remember the exact details, you remember who was there, and so those are just little pointers in your brain that, that you know says, Bill, Sally, Steve, and you know Todd, or whatever, if you go to a, a, <laughs> a party full of white guys like me. Um, and so, but then those pointers point to memories that are associated with those other people, and so then it's like, okay, all of my memories about Todd are associated together, and then the, the, the place where the party happened is its own set of pointers. So basically, the way that human memory works is it's like sparse priming representations embedded in a knowledge graph. Uh, everything that I know about uh, neuroscience and human memory, that's, that's pretty much the closest thing. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my YouTube transcripts and convert them into sparse priming representations. I probably won't show you that. I'll show you the script after I finish it, but I just wanted to show you that I took one of my longest videos, uh, which this was 58 kilobytes worth of text, and converted it down into 33 uh, statements. Uh, now, it is a little bit lossy, just like human memory, but that's okay. So anyways, um, I've got this copied on my clipboard, so let's go ahead and jump over to the assistants. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. So like Dave Shapiro YouTube uh, questions or whatever. Uh, and then I'm gonna give it some instructions. So these instructions will be like, um, answer uh, questions about Dave's YouTube uh, videos uh, to the best of your ability. If the uh, question is not directly answerable um, in the transcripts, then uh, do your best to infer, impute, uh, or otherwise uh, guess what the answer would be. Just tell the user that you don't have the exact answer and that you're speculating. Okay, so then we'll probably choose the latest and greatest model because it's faster, cheaper, and smarter. Uh, not only that, it has a huge window. And so then we'll do a retrieval and upload files. So I don't have this done yet, so I'm gonna pause the video real quick and come back and show you once I've got the goods to deliver. Uh, but yeah, so that's where we're going, uh, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. Okay, it took an embarrassingly uh, long amount of time to get this working, but so I opened, I updated my OpenAI um, API uh, or module in Python. So let me walk you through some of the changes that I had to make. So first, if you when you update. Sorry about that. So first, when you update the, uh, the the client, you'll need to start using it slightly differently. So from OpenAI, import OpenAI, uh, and then the response, so then you have to instantiate a client. So client equals OpenAI, and you set your key here. Uh, obviously, you're supposed to do it with an environment variable, but I use Windows and environment variables are you know, whatever. 
<laughs> Remember, I'm a very lazy coder. So anyways, then you use client chat completions create. Uh, so that looks a little bit different than it used to. Um, but then also for the for the response you do, uh, so this is the response object, response choices zero message content. Um, and that seems to work pretty well. Anyways, so now what I've got this doing is I've got it churning through all of my transcripts um, and it goes pretty fast. So I just started this a few minutes ago or a few uh, moments ago and we've already done 18. And so each of these is uh, gonna be much smaller than the original video. So these are the SPR. So these are, the SPR uh, is just the compressed version so that you get like the Cliff's Notes, um, which is should be enough to just feed into it. Uh, so this is using this in conjunction with retrieval augmented generation or whatever they're doing in the background should work really well. Uh, and also you notice they're much smaller. So the first 21 of these um, is a grand total of 30 kilobytes. Um, whereas we come over here to the originals and we select the first, um, let's see, actually I exclude those. Well, let's see, the first 1920, that's uh, half, more than half a megabyte. Um, so we're getting, we're getting a reduction ratio of more than 10 to one, um, which will be good because again, uh, feeding superfluous tokens into the model one that slows it down, but two, it increases costs. So this is an optimization step. Um, when I was still doing consulting, one of the things that I would often recommend for, for clients is to, um, is if you can, if speed is part of the UX consideration, the user experience, then do as much pre-processing as you can, particularly the slow stuff, um, and then use the fast stuff at uh, at inference time or at runtime, such as using vector search. So if you've already done the processing, this is slow and expensive. So you do the slow expensive thing once, and then you use vector search, which is cheap and fast uh, in production. We're, we're converting all this. This will take a little bit, but uh, like I said, you know, I'll just show you the good stuff at the end. Okay, so while this is running, um, I thought maybe it would be good to just riff on some ideas. Uh, you guys seem to like my uh, unstructured thoughts on some of this stuff. So um, as I mentioned in my video, introductory video to uh, OpenAI's big, big conference, uh, like wait, just wait, because you know we were working on MemGPT and retrieval augmented generation, and I was working on the basher loop, and OpenAI comes and just nukes the entire thing. I don't even need to think about it anymore. And this is the pattern that I have seen over the last four years, starting with GPT-2, GPT-3, GPT-4, and now GPT-4 Turbo, is that the things that are most useful, the things that are just like kind of the basic tools, uh, just get built into the, into the system. And so like, you know, this pretty much completely invalidates everything that I was doing with, you know, Remo, which was the rolling episodic memory organizer and the basher loop um, and those sorts of things. Now, that's not to say that there aren't cases where those very specific um, things aren't needed, but the next step after just having basic, uh, you know, retrieval augmented generation into bots is automatic knowledge graphs and automatic SPRs and that sort of thing. Um, and so like, you know, yeah, we can work really hard, you know, days, weeks, months, um, creating some of the tools, but really on the path towards AGI, as I've been watching uh, OpenAI and talking with people the last couple weeks, um, it really seems like their their approach is going to be a tools uh, first pr approach. And so what I mean by that is by adding one tool after another, so figuring out what is what is the next bottleneck. So for instance, with context windows, even at 128,000 tokens, that's still not enough of a context window to do some things. Uh, for instance, if you've got a, a scientific chatbot that needs to read literally thousands of papers and thousands of, of pages of data and other stuff, that's a lot to keep track of. I think 128,000 tokens is like 6,000 pages. So that's probably enough for most things, but you still remember that like, there's, there's a lot of text out there. And also some, some of these things are very token heavy, like raw data can be very token heavy. And there can be a lot to keep track of. Now, uh, with 128,000 tokens, that solves a lot of problems. So it's like, okay, just make the window bigger, great. And if, you know, if we go up by another 32X, that's gonna be 3 million tokens this time next year. Uh, which is like, at, the, at a certain point, it's just kind of like, 
okay, the, 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 the window size is solved, then you just make sure that it can handle the memory inside. And one of the things that Sam Altman said is that not only is the, is the window uh, bigger, but it's better at keeping track of what information it needs within that gigantic context window, which doesn't surprise me having done a few videos on, um, on LM Infinite from Meta, as well as the, um, oh, what was the name of the one from Microsoft? The one for a billion tokens. Anyways, I did videos on both of those. So there's hundreds of little algorithmic improvements on the attention mechanisms and, and, and attention masks that you can do. So, you know, I, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a million tokens or three million tokens this time next year, um, which is that's getting close to the amount of text that a human reads in an entire year. Uh, so, you know, you think like, okay, so uh, the, the ratio is roughly right now, it seems like it's, it's kind of like seven, uh, seven to 10. So like 100,000 tokens is 70,000 words. So that's like a good book. So you 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 double that, or you you go up 10x. So a million tokens is ru is roughly uh, maybe 10 books or whatever. So anyways, the idea is like most people read five to 10 books a year, um, and so a million tokens is literally a year worth of reading. Now, obviously, that doesn't include all the emails and all the text messages and all the videos that you watch, um, but like you know you can see running in the background, it's compressing literally like hundreds of hours worth of videos into a few succinct statements. So like this knowledge compression is really like ramping up. Um, and so uh, going back to the idea of open AI's building tools. So knowledge management, that is a huge like tool. Um, and then all the, all the function calls, all the other tools that it has access to. So like you combine those basic capabilities with the reasoning engine of the uh, of the GPT model, and then you add a software architecture uh, where you have some agents that are responsible for organizing the whole thing. You have other agents that are responsible for doing. You have other agents that are responsible for morality, ethics, and legality. And then you have the the beginnings of autonomous systems, and it really like I mentioned this yesterday, and I'm just going to say it again because I think it, it bears repeating, is that we are working towards um, a swarm intelligence is going to be the best way to characterize the way that AGI is going to emerge. And so it's not going to be like one thing that you talk to. It's going to be more like a beehive or an ant colony. Um, now, will we have a Borg queen to help out? That could be pretty cool. Um, let's see. Rate limit. Oh, you can see how fast it's spinning. Okay, I need to pause this because I hit my rate limits. <laughs> oh, yep, it killed itself. All right, let's see how far we got. So... Under transcripts, we have a total of 282, and then under SPRs, we got to 86. You know what? I think this is probably good enough to get started, so let's just move on to uh, building our assistant. So let's zoom in a little bit. All right. Create David Shapiro YouTube uh, chatbot. Double-spaced. Okay. So uh, you are a Q&A bot for David Shapiro's YouTube channel. Use the transcripts uh, to answer questions as best you can. You are also allowed to infer, impute, or guess if the question is not immediately answerable. Just do your best to fill in the blanks and let the user know that you are speculating. Okay. So then the model we're going to use is the latest GPT-4-1106 preview. And then we're going to do retrieval, and we're going to upload a bunch of files. So let's come over here to YouTube Chapter Generator, SPRs, and away we go. 80 videos is only 123 kilobytes. So like that's actually a relatively trivial amount of, of data overall. And we can see it's uploading, so this shouldn't take too long. There we go. So now we'll do save. Uh, let's see, validation error request. Make sure it has at most 20 items. Oh, darn. Okay, so unfortunately, it looks like we can only do 20 files right now. So that's uh, that's kind of understandable. I suspect that this limit is going to get uh, is going to get removed very quickly, especially since we're doing really small files. So let me let me try this differently. So basically, this entire thing is like a wasted waste of opportunity. Um, okay, so let's go to upload. Let's try. Um, well, here, we can only do 20, so that's fine. Um, let's choose all my AGI ones. So that's, um, let's see, that's six. And then uh, let's see, anything that says 
cognitive architecture, uh, core objective functions. That should be nine if I'm if I'm keeping track. Um, then ace, ace is good stuff. Sparse priming representations. All right, that's good enough. All right, so this one will be just a few. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we're limited to 20 files. Maybe what I could do is 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 reformat everything to fit within those 20 files, but let's just start here. All right, now this is my first run, so like I'm learning as I go. Uh, so you're learning with me. So let's see what happens next. Sips coffee. Bueller. Bueller. That's that's an old reference. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hey, shout out in the comments if you if you watch that movie. That movie came out when I was like pretty little, and so then I remember watching watching it and being confused about like I don't know if you saw like an explicit sex scene, but it was like an implied sex scene. And I'm like, I remember asking my dad like, "What are they talking about? Like, did they sleep together?" And he's just like, "I'll tell you when you're older." But I remembered it and I put it together later. Not that you needed to know that. This is really taking its time. You can tell I'm getting bored when I'm starting to riff on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Maybe I should stop recording. So actually, I wonder, um, since it's taking so long to upload, I wonder if it's doing some kind of processing in the background. You know, it might be helpful if I go look up the documentation. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, here we go. I found the documentation for knowledge retrieval. Uh, let's see how it works. Either passes a file content for short documents, performs a vector search. So it does do retrieval augmented generation. I'm wondering why it's taking so long, though. Uploading files for retrieval... Okay, files can be added to the message in a thread. So, okay, I mean, it seems it seems like it's pretty pretty straightforward, but let's see if it's done. Still not done, okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna pause the video and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so I'm trying for a third time and it keeps timing out, so we might just have to call it a day, which is really sad, but it's also not surprising because it just launched, so I imagine like a million and a half other people are trying to build assistance right now. But uh, so like I've, I've hit save and it's timed out and I keep coming to my assistance page and it's not here. So <laughs> really disappointing, but it's also day one. Um, but at least I walked you through the process of what I would do and some of the things that I figured out. So now that you can, uh, you can do it too. All right. Uh, have a good one. Like, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, as I mentioned on my other videos, I do have a uh, exclusive Discord community that you can get access to through Patreon. Links in the description. Also, if you're not in Discord, that's fine. I have exclusive content um, that is available to all Patreon supporters. There's two tiers. There's the basic tier, um, which has uh, one additional weekly video. And then the premium tier has another additional weekly video on top of that. So if you're on the premium tier, you get two additional weekly videos uh, that are raw, unfiltered, and deep dives into various topics. Plus, we also have live, uh, live stream Q&A sessions, uh, Discord town halls. They'll be recorded and that sort of thing. But yeah, jump on in, um, and I look forward to seeing you there. Have a good one.